Okay. Hi, everyone. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for uh, joining this uh, StreamZ community call. It's not our uh, bi-weekly community call as usual, but uh, it's one focused on a, a specific project that uh, uh, I was working on together with Kyle and uh, Antonio Prido that I will introduce uh, in a little bit. So uh, StreamZ decided to be part of the LFX mentorship program. So um, it's provided by the Linux Foundation. It's uh, a way for, uh, uh, you know, allowing students to uh, engage with the upstream and open source community uh, to work on uh, projects that they are proposing. And um, yeah, we decided to join uh, in order to get engaged more uh, uh, people, um, to have more users from the community and see uh, yeah, how we can improve StreamZ, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, the project that we uh, proposed was about uh, writing a proof of concept of a bridge from the NQTT protocol to Kafka. Uh, so we applied, uh, me and Kyle uh, were the mentors for this project, and uh, we have got uh, Antonio uh, as the mentee, uh, who is on call, and uh, yeah, let me just hand over to him, because uh, he's going to introduce his journey, uh, providing more details about the project itself, and uh, how, his, uh, how was his experience uh, on the mentorship program. So thank you everyone for joining, and uh, I guess that that's on you, Antonio. Uh, thank you very much, Paulo. Hi guys, uh, my name is Antonio Pedro, and today I'm going to present. Uh, today I'm going to share with the strings community and behind about my experience with the strings community and my experience with the LFX mentorship. Uh, before diving to this, uh, this journey, uh, I would like to talk a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm a final here computer science student and engineering at the Enterprise Institute of Information Technology, Delhi. And uh, I have been doing coding debugging since my high school. And uh, I collaborate as an undergraduate researcher at Triple ITD Multimodal Digital Media Analysis Lab. And my works there include prototyping mobile apps and doing MLOP stuff and the backend. Uh, I'm also part of the uh, I'm also a member of uh, the Google Develop Student Club chapter, and my work there is helping students, uh, new students, to get started with software development, open source, and mobile development as well. And of course, I'm part of I'm the lead and the founder of Angola Open Source Community, which is a non-profit organization aiming to promote uh, the development and adoption of open source software in Angola. I really like to talk and hear about cloud native technologies, cloud computing, distributed system, operating system, units programming, and beyond. And a fun fact about me is like I, I taught myself how to speak English in one year. Yes, that's all about me. And now let us dive into my experience as uh, LFX mentee with the Cloud Native Computing Foundation Strings project. Uh, before, uh, I would like to extend my gratitude to my mentors, Paulo and Kyle, uh, because of their guidance and their passion to guide me throughout uh, all the mentorship uh, process. Uh, they were there. They are here, of course, to help me with everything that I needed. Uh, and it's all the things related to technical aspect, so guidance in stuff I was doing, like I, I thought I would seek help from them and they were there to help me. And the, the streams community were also very helpful to me because I was just uh, very new to the streams and community itself. But with the help of some members of, of the community, I was able to understand and gain a better understanding of the ecosystem itself. So now let's talk uh, about the project that I I was working on during the mentorship. It's a, uh, during my mentorship, I had to build a MQTT uh, Kafka bridge, which is a software component that we allow 
uh, MFT declined to produce a message to Apache Kafka. But to understand this better, let us just take uh, and use a case of uh, an IoT enabled smart city infrastructure management system. Uh, in this type of scenario, uh, let me just point here. In this type of scenario in uh, smart cities, we have many, many aspects to take care of. For example, in this uh, in uh, infrastructure management system in a smart city, we have to deal with traffic lights, hair quality monitoring, surveillance cameras, weather station, energy consumption, and many others. And all of these aspects are producing message at some volume, different paces of uh, different data, data source. For example, in hair quality monitoring, we don't, we, they have various aspects to take a look, right? Like uh, what are the main pollens, uh, we are. We have also take a look at the environment, like uh, temperature, the humidity, and etc. So all of these messages will be producing, will be produced at some range or at some scale, and this, this system must be able to handle a diverse range of data source with varying data frequency and value. And the the challenge here is how do we efficiently collect process and analyze these disparate amounts of data to make a decision for this system, including, of course, traffic optimization, pollution control, and many more. That's why we need a suitable solution that can help us uh, implementing this. And the, the first approach of one can say we need MQTT, right? Because MQTT is uh, a lightweight pub, uh, pub sub message protocol uh, very suitable for IoT scenarios, and for example, in this scenario, it can be used uh, efficient to efficiently manage the flow of information for various sensors and devices, and the, it's also very easy to broadcast message to a, a multiple receivers, right? So that means uh, in uh, in this in, in this scenario, there can be lots of entities trying to focus on something. So using MQTT protocol or MQTT broker, it, it can be very important or it can be very useful to broadcast the message to all those ent entities. And of course, there are many more. And uh, yeah, it looked perfect, right? But uh, not quite. Uh, and uh, we need more because not the MQTT itself, but the implementation of various brokers, MQTT brokers, can uh, present some challenge while dealing while dealing with the uh, production of data in a diverse oh, in a different different sources and different volumes and one of these challenges are listed here for example how can we ingest data at different pace of consumption uh, if we have uh, if we have data sort of producing data at real time how do we process that data? in real time and uh, how do we store data in durable way even to processing the same data as late so those are some aspects that MQTT lacks of and the, to make our system even more reliable uh, scale scalable and etc we might need to integrate with Apache Kafka right because Apache Kafka uh, it offers uh, scalability, reliability, and it's also very suitable for data processing and analysis. So now you can think that the problem with the real-time data processing can be overcome with the while we are using Apache Kafka, and we can do that by easily integrating with the various streaming framework. And of course, Apache Kafka offers another solution, but still, it's not enough because uh, Apache Kafka itself. Uh, is not well suited for communication with IoT devices and sensors, right? And uh, I can say I can say that it doesn't have native support for IoT. Let's say Avash Kafka was made mainly for running in data centers and the computers and, and etc. And the IoT devices are supposed to run in a harsh environment, and the, that's why we have to keep using MQTT, but we also want to make the use of Apache Kafka to get the same BNFT and make a really able, scalable system. And that's why we have built the MQTT 
uh, Apache Kafka bridge. So the MQTT uh, Kafka bridge uh, is a software component that acts as a bridge between MQTT and Apache Kafka cluster, and it enables one-way communication from MQTT to Kafka, allowing MQTT client to send data to Apache, uh, Apache Kafka cluster. And the, uh, at this space, the subscription from MQTT devices out of scope because here we are focused on producing message to the Apache cluster instead of being, instead of sending commands and the receiving data to from Kafka to IoT devices. And this is how our, this is how our system look like. So in this hand we have uh, the MQTT devices, which can be any kind of device producing message to the streams MQTT Kafka bridges, Kafka bridge, sorry. And they uh, internally we have a server that will be is composed with a mapper and the, a producer, uh, a Kafka producer to produce matches to an Apache Kafka. And of course, this will be even more clear after more slides that are ahead. So this is the architecture of uh, our bridge. Uh, here at the top, we have the MQTT server initializer, which we are relying on the Netty to make this, uh, to, to make, to make the MQTT clients able to connect to our bridge. And the, this MQTT server initializer will be re responsible for uh, handling with, to, to, it will be responsible to create an abstraction with the, how we are going to define, how we are going to uh, convert MQTT, uh, MQTT, MQTT specific information to some other information, like here we use encoders, MQTT encoders, and uh, other aspects of it. And the, we have MQTT server handle, and uh, this is the one of the core parts of our system because this is the part that will be running while our bridge is also running, right? And here is where our Kafka bridge producer and MQTT Kafka mapper comes into the picture. So. Um, the Kafka bridge producer will be responsible. Oh, let's start. Let's talk about MQTT Kafka mapper first. So, to be more clear, so the MQTT Kafka mapper will be responsible to receive message uh, from MQTT client, uh, make some transformation, the make some transformations, and the then the Kafka bridge producer will be there to produce this message to the Apache Kafka uh, cluster. And the, at the top, uh, at the bottom, we have the bridge configuration, which includes uh, configuration related to MQTT server, uh, Kafka related um, configuration, and also here we have uh, what we call the top mapping rules of Tomar. So now let us just talk uh, specifically about each component that you saw uh, in the previous slide, and the let's talk first about the MQTT Kafka mapper and see how it works. So as I said before, uh, it's responsible for map incoming MQTT topic to Kafka topic and the key, of course. And in this diagram, we can clearly see how it works. So we have an MQTT public message that is coming from a MQTT device. And the, inside the MQTT Kafka, we have a function that will be receiving an, a string that has the MQTT topic and the, this, this, the, the MQTT mapper will try to match, uh, will try to match this incoming topic and look, by looking at our top mapping rules. I will explain what top mapping rule is uh, in the next slide so it can be more uh, easy to understand. Uh, yes, so the, this function will try to find a to we'll try to find a, a, a rule that matches the, the incoming MQTT topic. And if it matches, if this incoming MQTT topic matches any rule inside our topic mapping rule, uh, they have to, uh, uh, this function will return the mapped Kafka topic and the key has a string, or, or if it doesn't match, or if no rules were defined, it will use a default Kafka topic and it will also return a new key. So to, more, to be more clear, let us just try to understand what is, what is top, 
this top mapping rule is. So the top mapping rules uh, is a set of pattern that the users pro the use provides to define how the MQTT bridge should map. Sorry, uh, please just. Uh, Antonio, if you're talking, we cannot hear you. Okay, now now we can hear you. No, we cannot hear you. Yes. Now, yes, 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 now it's fine. Now it's fine? Yes, it's fine. Okay. You have ju just to close, yeah, just to close this window. Okay, uh, that's fine. Now it's fine. Okay. Yes. Sorry, sorry, for, sorry to, to interrupt. So, as I was saying, the top mapping rule is a set of patterns that use provide to define how the MQTT bridge should map MQTT, uh, MQTT should map MQTT topic names to Kafka topic and the Kafka keys. And why we need to do that? Uh, we need to do that because uh, this concept of topic. Even though it's used in both MQTT as uh, environment and the Apache Kafka environment, they mean different things, right? Um, in Apache Kafka, we have topic to define, for example, uh, it's like a table, right? It contains information like where uh, the producer will have to send information to. It's what we understand by topic in Apache Kafka. In another hand, topic in MQTT is just uh, a tool that they use or a characteristic that they use for routing, right? Let's say I want to I want to send a message to some to some to, to some broker. I need to get some uh, address or some uh, I need I need to get some address where these messages will be sent to, or even uh, I want to consume message from somewhere. I need to know where I want to consume this this message from. Uh, yeah, these are the different perception of uh, uh, topic in both MQTT and Apache Kafka, and that's why we need to create an effective way to mapping this kind of topic. And another point I was just forget is uh, they have different name conventions, right? So in MQTT, for example, as you can see here, MQTT. Normally we have different levels, like we have single uh, level and we have also multi level with call and the, it, uh, the Apache Kafka doesn't support this kind of uh, naming. And also in MQTT we can define names with some signals and et cetera, which in Apache Kafka is not possible. For example, this forward slash in Kafka is not possible, right? So that's why we have to create a way of mapping the, the, the topic name and the Kafka name so that we can effectively common, uh, send the message from MQTT to Apache Kafka. So this topic map rule is here to do that for us. And the, this is how it works. So this is, each rule is defined with the help of mapping rule. Uh, as you can see in this image, uh, all this list is the topic map rules and how this object inside the list sorry, inside this list is known as the mapping rules. And this mapping rules is uh, composed by an MQTT topic, which is uh, actually a pattern. It's not the actual MQTT, right? It's just a pattern, uh, which is a, a reject com comprised with a, a reject expressions. Uh, and as you can see, and the, the idea here is when the actual MQTT or IoT device or MQTT client is trying to send some message through our bridge, uh, it will have to, uh, it will have, let's say, it will have to match this pattern, right? So this pattern is here to say, okay, this MQTT clients want to send message to this Kafka topic. Uh, and this, this MQTT client want to have this key, 
and this also is very it is very useful because it will uh, reduce a lot of time while you are trying to produce message and etc so yeah we have this LTT pattern here we have the kafka topic which is a template it's not at the actual kafka topic and as you can see it's defined here with a placeholder a positional placeholder and the the placeholder are nothing but the actual value that will be captured in this caption group here in in our mqtt uh, pattern for example here we have uh, dollar sign one this corresponded to the first capturing group in the MQTT pattern, and the, the second positional placeholder correspond to the last uh, capturing group in our MQTT pattern. So this is some uh, example of how it, it looks like. Uh, we also have some conventions because we had to look for a way to implement this uh, white card uh, support uh, of uh, MQTT. So for that, what we have done is like this, for example, this caption group is correspondent uh, to the plus, the single level weight card in MQTT, and this dot star corresponded to the multi-level uh, wild card in MQTT. So those are aspect, uh, where, uh, important aspect to take a look, and the, the, this is what the top map will does. So now the Apache Kafka, the Apache, uh, Apache topic, uh, which is a template, is it has a positional placeholder, which I already explained. And this op option uh, and this positional placeholder can also be used uh, to generate the Kafka key. Yeah, this is a little bit about the topic in map rule. Uh, now let us just see some example. Uh, so let's say we have a Tomar like this one, just in the uh, has in the previous example. Uh, and the, we have an in, incoming MQTT message with the, the following uh, MQTT topic. We have building slash H2 room uh, 108 slash temperature. So this is the actual MQTT where the MQTT client want to send message, right? So we need to find a way to, conf we need to know, okay, this client wants to send a message through our bridge to this top, through this topic. This topic corresponds to what in Kafka, where this, uh, for example, this message will be produced in, inside the Kafka cluster. So we rely on the topic map rule to do that. For example, in this example, uh, the first uh, the, 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 the first mapping rule that will be found is the this one, because uh, as you can see, if we expand the regular expression, we see that this top MQTT topic uh, part is starting with the building. Then we have a word. Then we found we find the room here. Then it's it's uh, then it's supposed to accept a digit a digit right from with the from one to four digits right. And this is what we have here. We have three digits. And the, after this, it can match anything because we have the multi-level wildcard in our partner. So this can be temperature, they can be something else. So this MQTT topic matches this mapping rule. So because of this, this is going to be the result. So for Apache Kafka, uh, for, for the Kafka topic, we are going to have building H2, H2 because the placeholder is going to be replaced by, by the first capturing group, the actual value, which is H2. And the for the key, which is the second capture group, we have uh, 108, and we have here the key. And the value can be like the payload of the message in bytes. And the, the most importantly also is that the, the some, 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 sometimes the, the topic needs to know the, the topic uh, the brokers need to the Kafka brokers need to know where this message is coming from, so that maybe he wants to do some uh, processing or something like that. And that's why we need to send the MQT topic, the actual MQT topic, through the the record headers, uh, as you can see here. The uh, actual MQT topic we are sending through the headers. So next. Uh, we are just now talking about how this Kafka bridge producer works. 
So as we can see, uh, as we know, uh, in Apache Kafka, the producer can produce message in different levels, right? It can produce message in one level, in level one, and with acknowledge level one, uh, zero, or hall, which is minus one. And for that, has the, this producer need to be uh, created beforehand? Like we have to tell, okay, we are creating this producer, and this is to it, this is this this producer is supposed to produce message with this acknowledge level. And this is some characteristics that we cannot change late. So how we can how how our bridge will handle that? So for that we have implemented two internal producers. Uh, one configured with the uh, acknowledge level zero, which will be handle uh, message at the act level zero, and one with the act level one. And the, whether it should use the acknowledge level with one or one depends on the MQTT message quality of service, right? And of course, we need some kind of mapping, and this is how we have mapped so far. Uh, like uh, the MQTT message, uh, most, at most once was mapped to a, a producer acknowledge level zero and the at least once was mapped to acknowledge level one. Why we did this machine is like because uh, they have kind of similar uh, meaning. Like in uh, MQTT, this uh, quality of service means like the client is not willing to and it's not willing to receive an acknowledge from the, the broker, right? Or from the server or something like that. Uh, it's not willing to do that. And at the same, on the other hand, the Kafka producer is doing the same. Okay, I'm producing message, but I don't really care about the uh, if the message was successfully received by, oh, it was successfully published into the topic or not. I don't want to know that. And we have the at least once, which is okay. Uh, Okay, the MQTT message, uh, MQTT client is sending the message. Uh, okay, at least just give me some acknowledge. Okay, at least tell me that the me this message was uh, received. Uh, and the and, and, uh, another side we have the producer act level one, which kind of means the same thing. Uh, but here, just to emphasize, it's like uh, this at least once can also be mapped to acknowledge level uh, hall in uh, Ka Kafka producer acknowledge level, but uh, we have decided to go by these approaches so far. Oh, now it's the uh, exciting part, which is the demo. So uh, like talking is cheap. Let's show how it works in, in reality. Right, so I will just uh, explain how we have explained the structure of how a bridge uh, in, in reward. So we have, uh, in this demo, I'm going to show a bridge that will be running in Kubernetes and with the help of the Kafka operator, Streams Kafka operator. Uh, I will be, uh, I'm running an Apache, uh, Apache Kafka cluster on my laptop on, on the Kubernetes with the help of the operators. And the, now we need to uh, deploy the, the bridge to, to Kubernetes also. And uh, this is the configuration, okay? So here we have the uh, the bridge related settings or the, the bridge related configuration. We have the bridge ID, uh, which name is, the value is my bridge. We have the MQTT server uh, related configuration, like it is like uh, we have the host. It can be something, okay, the system will decide. Uh, we have the port by default, it is 1883. And we also have the Apache Kafka related configuration, which is actually the bootstrap servers. And we am using the the address of the server that, that of the cluster that is running on Kubernetes. And uh, as, we, as we were talking about the topic map rules, topic map is a JSON file, and the, this is the, the actual values of the, uh, the topic map rule. So in, for, for this example, uh, for this demo, we have all those rules. Uh, I think seven rules are there. 
and the yeah, the log configuration which it doesn't really matter for this demo okay now let us just see okay i have uh, the bridge running i have the our mftt bridge running uh, we also have the apache kafka cluster running and the yeah let's see how it is let's, let's like ctl oh before before showing it let me just start my mftt client okay yeah let's start mftt client and while it's starting we can do something like uh, uh let's see logs Okay, so that's the line we are going to follow, and the, let's see the namespace we have. So this is our bridging action. Uh, yeah, this is our bridging action. So it will first create both the two producers that I was talking about, one with the zero arc, then another one with the one the acknowledge level one and then the bridge will be able like will be uh up and the waiting for mftt client to connect and produce the message right to send message and now oh yeah now let us just see uh we have the the bridge running and we are going to try to produce a message to it but before, let's just, uh, let me just do QCTL. And one, one, three. Forwarding for that's port forward, the other port way around. Port forwarding, sorry. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Port forwarding. Just, just port forward. Okay, okay. Okay, now it's fine. And let's start, okay, let's start a consumer. So we have a consumer here. See, maybe let me just change its name. So one. Okay, now let us just first uh, consume message from topic message default. Let's see if it runs. Uh, it's running. Okay. It's running now, okay. Uh, we have also our MQTT client here. Uh, let's just wait the MQTT client to start. I don't know why it's taking so long. Now I think we are ready to go. So we have connected our MQT client and just to let you to see, okay, our client has, has has connected successfully, as you can see here. And they like the 
this MQTT explorer that I'm using when it's connected to a broker or to a server, it's try for it's first try to uh, subscribe to some try to subscribe to some topic, and it, you can see the bridge is saying that subscribe is not handled here. So let's try to produce some message to some random topic. Let's say topic and some row message. Hello. So when we are just trying to produce message to some topic that is not defining the topic in a tomar, is this what's gonna happen? So we say hello string Z community. And how the message will automatically publish to uh default message topic that we have defined it but let's see now okay we have something else let's say we the example i gave we have building and uh, i think we have building uh okay we have h2 we have room we have uh, temperature something like that now if we publish this it's not going to it's not going to the the default topic but it's going instead to let me just see here a building room and something or something it's going to building and the the first capturing group so let's just try to cre let us try to create a let's try to create a consumer for that so let's come here change his name name of this consumer say 10 space and then here we can just type building h2 say QCTL. Antonio, yes? you need a um, dash before the TI. Oh, okay, okay, the, sorry. Yeah. Here. Yeah, uh, adjacent to the TI, yeah. This is fine now? I think. I think that should be good. Uh, yes, thank you, thank you. That's why I say my mentors, Hermasi, <laughs> say, I say, say thank you. So, just now... one more thing. I, I, I think that you're publishing uh, missing the room in the topic. Now, if you go back to the NQTT client. Mm -hmm. No, we have room. We have room here. Yeah, but you, you, you don't have the number of the room. You have building, ah, okay, sure, H2, sure. and room, so it's not going to match the pattern, right? This yes, way. yes, yes, right, right. So okay. now, if we publish, we can see we have Hello Streams community and another message. Uh, yes, and uh, that's, I think that's how for our demo. Just show how it works, and we can also try to see more, more uh, consumers. We can you know, also try to produce. You guess your voice is basically message from others, city client, or other topic, and etc. And he published a message already. MFT topic, uh, map it to my voice. You are breaking Hello. up a little bit, Antonio. Yeah, I think that you are having network issues, maybe. You are breaking up with your voice. What about now? Is that fine? Yeah, let's try, yes. Yeah, yeah. So it will, like, showing that this MFT topic will be mapped to the Kafka topic building H2 with the key building 302 which is the the room number and then the message will be sent uh to okay the another example is so we can also we are sending the message with the uh 
uh, quality of service zero. And now let's try with one. And they publish the same day. And now what happened is okay. We have the, this empty topic is going to be mapped to this. And the, now it is showing also the offset of, of this uh, pr production, right? When we send message to Apache Kafka on topic, building H2 with offset three. Yeah, we can also watch how. Uh, yeah, I think uh, if I miss something from this demo, maybe I can pass to Paolo. Yeah, so thank you very much, Antonio. Uh, thank you very much for sharing your work. It was cool to see everything working using StreamC to deploy the Kafka cluster and yeah, deploying the, 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 the bridge and uh, see it working. So I don't know if uh, people on the call have questions for Antonio. Uh, just think about that. Uh, yeah, it was a kind of proof of concept. So just a way to, to validate that something like that is possible, uh, bridging NQTT to Kafka this way. And uh, yeah, we have a lot of idea to improve the projects, uh, of course. Uh, and uh, yeah, so it's just the beginning. Uh, maybe at some point it could be integrated into StreamZ. Uh, it depends on, on the community, of course, if you uh, get some interest from the community. Anyway, it's part of the StreamZ organization today. So it's an actual StreamZ project. Uh, as all the other projects that we have, the operator, the HTTP bridge, uh, and so on. I guess that if there are no questions, we can hand here. And uh, yeah, thank you very much, Antonio. It was really great to work with you. Uh, congratulations for your hard work, and the result is great. Thank so you. it's kind of visible to everyone and yeah thank you again and see you all thank you very much see ya bye thanks, thanks antonio for the demo bye folks